Welcome to another video tutorial. In this one, I want to show you how we can connect data from files in our Microsoft Azure storage account to an Excel spreadsheet. And we're going to make that connection in a way that if we change any of the data in a file in our storage account, then it will also be changed in our spreadsheet. So we're always looking at the most up-to-date data. And you can see behind me I've got my Azure storage account open to a container called container1. I've got three CSV files in my blob storage account called data1, 2, and 3. And I'm going to import the data from one of these files into an Excel spreadsheet. And so how to do that, if I wanted to do it for data1, click the file, and that will open up a few options. This generate SAS or generate secure access signature is what I want to click to generate a link that Excel can use to find my Azure account. So click Generate SAS, then click Generate SAS Token and URL. Go down to Blob SAS URL and click the Copy to Clipboard button at the end of the link. So you have that. Save there. Then open an Excel spreadsheet. Go up to the Data tab and then click From Web. And that's given us a window where we can paste that link that we just copied. And then click OK. Then this window is going to pop up the first time that you do this. This is for the security of your Excel spreadsheet, mainly for other users. So I can click anonymous here, and that means if I click connect, it's going to connect to my Azure, Azure storage account, and it needs no other credentials to be able to do that. So if I send this spreadsheet to someone else, they're not going to need any login information. They're just going to be able to get the data straight from my Azure storage account. I do have the option to set an account key. So that means that we have to provide an account key to be able to make the spreadsheet work, to make the connection to my Azure storage account, or similarly for a, a shared access signature token. And I can get that token if I just go back to my storage account. Um, it's just above the URL here. So for this example, I'm just going to click anonymous. I'm going to use no other um, credentials. And I'll show you how to change that if you change your mind after. So I'll click anonymous, click connect. And then it's going to show me a preview of my data here. So it's just two columns called X and Y. I can transform the data if I want to before bringing it into my spreadsheet. I'm just going to click load. So now the data has been loaded into my spreadsheet as a table. It's also open this queries and connections tab up here. Um, let's just plot this data as a scatter plot because the next thing I want to do is test if I change the data on Azure will also change in my spreadsheet. So now you can see what the data looks like. Let's come back to Azure. And at the moment we're in this Generate SAS tab. We want to come to the Edit tab. So I'll just change a number. I'll change this 68 to 100. And I'll save that there. So now it's been updated on my Azure account. I'll go back to Excel. And I can just go to data and then refresh all. And you can see that point just moved slightly. And now um, this first number here is 100 where I changed it. If you want to update this on a schedule, you can come to query and this tab will pop up if you add a query to your spreadsheet. Go to properties and you can set if you want it to refresh every time the file is opened or on a schedule every few minutes if you want, or you can just click the data, refresh all. The last thing I'll show you is if we want to change the security, that option to be anonymous or require some kind of token, we can come to data up here, go to get data, and go to data source settings. And so that will show me the security settings of all the connections I've made in the spreadsheet. I've only got one a connection to my blob storage account. So if I click that, and click edit permissions. I have the option to change the anonymous credentials here if I click edit and maybe set an account key or a shared access signature to be required. So I hope that's been helpful. Any questions add them to the comments below and thank you for watching.